Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to make sure that your composition, your project, your final output looks the same not just on one computer but on a variation of monitors because believe it or not unless you specify a color profile you could have some real problems. Let me explain. When you create a project unless you define a color space it will use the color space of your monitor. However Different monitors and systems use very different color spaces, not to mention PC versus Mac, web versus TV versus mobiles, etc. So your precious composition will look very different on each type of monitor unless you tell it what you use to create it in the first place. Now let's just go back to After Effects for a moment. Here we have our project and what I've done is I've created a, a solid layer, I've turned it off just to demonstrate how color is calculated. These are color wheels. And it's basically showing that hue, that's the actual color itself, is given a value in terms of degrees, 0 to 360. So if I very quickly open up the layer solid settings and click on the picker, we've got hue, saturation and brightness which also equate to red, green, blue RGB values. But I'm just going to show in hue, saturation and brightness. Now here we have the slider and if I start pulling it up you'll see that the degrees of the angle, which is the same as the angle around this circle, are going to change as the hue, the colour changes. So as I pull it up it goes all the way through from 0 to 360 as it goes through the whole range of colours. So that's one number, that's one part of the array, if you like, three parts to the array, hue, saturation and brightness. Saturation is telling us what percentage of saturation it has, so it's 100% saturated, that's 0% saturation on the colour. And then brightness is telling us how bright or dark it is, so we can go right up to the top so it's completely bright at 100%, and completely black and dark at zero. So you have three parts to the array, hue, saturation and brightness, and that gives a number, and down here we even have a hexadecimal number which is used to define what this actual color is. So you can see color is all about numbers because computers work on numbers, they don't work on visual. So we are creating a number when we select a color, and that number is going to be interpreted on different systems depending on what color space they work in. So let me just cancel these out and uh, I can delete that layer and we can go back to my little document here and go down here so we can say hue, saturation and lightness is going to equal a number also if we were to define it as red, green and blue that would also give out a number how that number is interpreted by a monitor is dependent on the color space that that monitor uses unless you tell it what color space you use to create that color in the first place Okay, so I'm going to say that again. How that number is interpreted by a monitor is dependent on the color space of that monitor. So what that means is if another monitor or a mobile phone or a TV or a Mac versus a PC has got a different color space that it's working in, it's going to take the number that you have created in your first monitor and it's going to give it a completely different color when it's moved to another monitor and it will not look the same unless you tell it what color space you use to create that color in the first place. Incidentally, color, this is the British spelling of color with the U in it. I know it doesn't make any sense, but hey, that's British spelling. Okay, so if we have no color space specified, monitor 1 will have given an RGB value that say was equivalent to blue, but monitor 2 when it receives that same RGB value might see it as a more of a blue-green, and so the color or the hue would have shifted and it will look different because you haven't told it any way of checking between the two. However, there is an answer. The International Color American Spelling Consortium. And the International Color Consortium, or ICC, provides lookup tables to help to convert the color from one color space to another color space and keep the color looking the same. So if you have got a color profile embedded into your output, an ICC color profile, you've told the project what it is and it's output it with that color profile, then it doesn't matter what it goes on to. It doesn't matter if it goes on to a PC, a Mac, a TV, or whatever it's going to go on to, that color will end up looking the same. So let me just show you what that means. Color space specified, monitor 1 or your project says RGB equals blue, monitor 2 does this, RGB equals a number, whatever number this was, plus a lookup table which is looking at the color profile that it was created in and turns around and says, ah, okay, it equals blue, I've got it. 
So because we have specified the color space, the lookup table is provided, and the monitor can automatically, you don't have to do anything, it just automatically works through the lookout table and said, okay, that in the old profile equals blue, therefore I will make it look the same blue in mine because I've got this lookup table. It's a fantastic solution, and what it means is that when you create a project and embed a color profile into it, no matter what it shows on, it's going to look the same. The colors will look the same. And that's very important because you've spent an awful long time setting up your project. OK, so how do I actually apply a color profile and output a color profile to know that it works? First thing we need to do really is we need to set a cover profile for the whole project. This isn't for the individual footage items. This is for the whole project. And that's done in one of two ways. You can either go to the panel menu here and go down to project settings, or you can go file project settings. You get to the same place, you'll see that we have got a section down here that says color settings. Now I'm not going to go through all of these because some of them are quite complicated. I'm just going to show you how to set up a working space. Firstly you can set out how many bits per channel which is the same as this little icon down here and if you alt click or option click on this particular icon you can change this to a different number of bits per channel. Same as this drop down. Let's put it at 16 bits per channel for this particular project and then this next one which is the working space. Now this is just the working space for your project. You aren't outputting this but you are setting up the project so that everything inside your project is working to the same goal if you like. Now color spaces I'm just going to show you a few. This particular one here would be great for web video particularly if it's somewhat cartoony. Um, if you're going for high definition TV I would choose the HDTV Rec 709 and if you're going for standard definition, I would be choosing the standard definition ones down here, the PAL and the NTSC. Uh, just out of interest, the 16 to 235 business is all about making sure that your colors are broadcast safe. But at the moment, I'm just going to go for the normal one. Click HDTV, and it's set up. And you have a few options down here, which I'm not going to go through. Um, suffice to say that it's quite good to work, particularly when you actually move to 32 bits per channel, to blend colors using one gamma. That really makes the, um, the blend modes add and multiply work properly without too much clipping and what have you. Um, you can read bits and pieces, but I'm not going to go through those at the moment. And then we click OK. Now the project color profile has been set up, but you haven't outputted anything yet. But you can't output a color profile unless you set up a project color profile in the first place. So the first thing you need to do is set up the project color profile because you won't have options available to you to output a color profile unless you set it up for the project. Complicated, but that's just the way that Adobe have done it. OK, also you can view various simulated outputs. So at the moment I've got mine on HDTV. Um, you can look at some legacy ones. If you look at the colors as I click, the colors of my, my flames as I click on the legacy Macintosh, you'll see that they did actually slightly shift. I'll just go back again, simulate output HDTV. So you can actually have a feel for what it looks like between a few various options. But the real power comes when we output it. So we've got our composition made, we've applied a color profile to the whole project, now we need to output it with a color profile so, so that the final version is going to show brilliantly on other people's machines. How do we do that? Well, we go to Composition Add to Render Queue, and then we need to look at our output module. You click on the word lossless, and then we have our choices. Now, I want to output, I think, to a TIFF sequence, and I actually want to output with the RGB and alpha, because uh, this is flames, and I don't really want the black when I output. However, I've also got a tab up here that says Color Management. Click on Color Management, and now I have my working space already sorted out. It's working space HDTV. Please note that I can specify a whole range of output modules now that I have set one up for the project. So say I actually want to do a version specifically for the web. I might choose the sRGB. Or I want to do a version that's specifically for standard definition television. I can choose a different workspace now that color management is enabled for the whole project. I'm going to stick with HDTV. So now my output module setting has an output profile specified, a working space. Basically I've said to After Effects, this is the color space that I want this project to be shown in. And After Effects is going to render based on what I have set in this output profile. I'm just going to show you that in After Effects Help. If I open up Help, it says here, After Effects chooses a rendering intent based on the output color profile that you choose. 
In other words, After Effects is going to try and make sure that the colours of the project match as much as possible the working space that I have chosen. But I want you to see down here as well, it says this, Core values will not be modified because working space and output colour space match each other. Now if I modify that from, say, the HDTV to the sRGB here, notice what it says. Colour values will be converted from the working space profile, that's the one we set up from the project, to the output profile, the one that we specified here. And what that's saying is After Effects is going to calculate whatever the colours were in our original project and it's going to use those ICC lookup tables to be able to convert them to the sRGB profile so that the colours are going to look the same. So I've set up a project profile, which is the one that it's going to use for all its reference work. Now I'm in the output stage. As I change it, so I go to a power one down here, SDTV, it says clearly core values will be converted from to the output profile, whatever we specified. It's going to look at this and say these are what the colours are supposed to be. Let's calculate them and make sure that they're exactly the same when we open it up in a different colour working space. And then we can click OK. I'm going to go back to my um, HDTV and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to choose my output location, save and I'm going to render it out. Now while it's rendering out it's important to say that when you have set up a project working space, so when you've gone to your file and you set up your colour working space for your project, you can now move your project from one machine to another with confidence that you will be able to view the colours on a completely different machine exactly as they were originally intended. Because the project initially set it up with HDTV, say that was done on a PC, and I then go across to a Mac which views colour in a very different working space, I still know that when it opens up on Mac I will see what it looked like by the original producer on the Windows machine. So it's really important to set up colour profiles just so that you can move things around, particularly if you render out on multiple machines. It's really important to make sure that you've got a colour profile that's consistent across all the machines and so that the output colour profile is going to look correct when you do a conversion. So these are really important reasons for having this done in the first place. So now that this has been outputted, it's been outputted as a, as a TIFF sequence, so this is something that I would input into another program. And that brings me to one final point. I'm going to go back to my render queue. I'm actually going to duplicate this, so Command or Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to open this up a bit more. And I'm going to look at this output module. Again, it's got this custom TIFF sequence. And I'm going to go back to my color management. And I have an option here. And this option is only available for image sequences. I can actually embed the profile. If I click Embed of the Profile, it says the output profile will be embedded in whatever you've outputted. Now I'm outputting a TIFF sequence that I might well bring in as footage in other projects and other programs. So I can take this particular sequence, I can save it, and I can take it into any machine that I like, and I know that the profile is already embedded, so that when it works through, even if I've chosen another profile for the project itself, it will still take in this particular piece of footage and see how it was originally supposed to look and then convert it to the working space of the project and then at the output module stage it can even be converted to another one and it will still look the same as the original footage. Now you can only do this with the sequences when it actually comes to your main output and you're actually looking at say QuickTime uh, MPEG-4, yep MPEG-4, click OK and then I was to go across to my colour management you'll notice that the embed profile is not there that's because it's assuming that this is your final output that you're sending out to the various machines. Now do bear in mind that different monitors have got different colour temperatures, they've got different ranges of colours or the way that they can display colours, particularly when you get down to mobile phones and things. So it will never be perfect, but it will certainly be far, far closer to what you originally intended because you set up a project working space to specify exactly what your colours would, should look like and then this conversion process with your output module to whatever your particular target format is. Now, I hope you found this useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.